Hi, everyone. Karen the Furster. Here's what happened and Karen and Talks podcast. Uh, first of all, thank you so much for taking the time to talk with us today and congrats on the show. Um, I am very intrigued about the concept of using a murder to be the launch pad for telling multiple stories because the, the show is talking about racism. It's talking about sexism. It's talking about massage noir. It's talking about cheating, lying, um, <laughs> corporate, corporate <laughs> espionage. All of these things, and I think it's a brilliant way to tell us to have one focal point and just have all of these stories branching out from it. So I want each of uh, each of you, like all of you to talk about which aspect you find the most intriguing to play, not only as your own personal characters, but also maybe to watch as like, like maybe watching someone else's um, story tell through this murder, um, this murder, kind of murder mystery and this murder trial. I'll start. So, um, for me, it was, it was, you know, the case, the case was kind of like second place. For me, first place for me was watching Lewis and Jax trying to figure out. Uh, oh, did he freeze? Michael, oh. your fee froze. It's a great time for Michael to freeze. Yeah. <laughs> right, right. So, figure out. Yeah, Michael is also like, the number, you know, the last thing we need is Michael talking saying. about how much he roots for Lewis and Jack. <laughs> Next question. <laughs> I will just piggyback on Michael until he comes back because that is one of my favorite elements, you know, just seeing how the, how the dynamics of this marriage and how things are playing out, you know, because that's just real life, you know, and, and realizing Jack's realizing that she has this, this crack that's beginning to appear in her life, you know, and, and enter here comes, you know, Damon. Um, and so seeing the, the navigation of a marriage in that kind of space is the most um, interesting aspect of what's going on for me, because I feel like that's something that's so uh, relatable to a lot of people. <laughs> what I, what I, what I enjoy is that there's a, a thing that sometimes black people do to each other that I think is, uh, front and center on the show, which is we kind of judge each other without knowing, uh, you know, the whole the whole game. You know, like I think that my character Braden walks in and he sees this black woman and he makes assumptions uh, just based on what he sees. And uh, I think uh, Jax uh, makes assumptions ba about Braden just based on what she sees. And I think over the course of the episodes, they both see that there's much more to to it than, mm -hmm. than to the eye that comes to the eye. You know, and and they're forced to I think admit within themselves that they got each other wrong. Mm -hmm. And so uh, that manifests in good ways and bad ways. But I think it's something that sometimes we do to each other because she sees this black guy who's got the money and the white wife, and he sees this black woman in the corporate setting, and I think he's intimidated by her. And so they just bring all their baggage to the game. And I think that's something that we really do in real life too as black people. And, and, and we get to see that worked out on screen. I would just add on to that. Um, I think one of the one of the really cool things is the, your question was really was really good. You asked about how these different aspects of this one event, but truthfully, when that one event comes across our phone, we put all the aspects of ourselves on that one event and make a choice. So I think one of the great things about um, and Michael said Michael's mentioned this earlier. I give him credit for it. Is that when you start the show, you think you understand what the recipe of the show is once you get to it, right? But by the time you get toward the end of it, it's actually what you thought, but not what you thought <laughs> in the most in, in most surprising way. And I think that's the ride where it's like you think, you know, everything like, you know, it's like the thing that you least expect could potentially happen or vice versa. And I think that's the exciting part. Mm -hmm. You know, I will I will say that um, I will say that. I, agree, I do agree that for me, you know, the Jackson Lewis relationship exploring, you know, how that happened, like how we watched that happen over time is, you know, was the exciting part of the story for me. I always feel like uh, a lot of times when there are issues in particularly Black love stories, there's an element of toxicity or, um, you know, just kind of either abuse or trauma that is layered in it. And I, but I, I didn't want to show that. I just wanted to show what happens like when people are just not communicating mm -hmm. <laughs> with each other, because that's really what happens in a lot of relationships, right? Like that break down, it's a lack of communications. It's ass making assumptions. It's um, you're really, you're not having actual mm -hmm. conversations. You're having conversations with each other's traumas and triggers. And so you just watch, you know, Jax and Lewis just trigger each other. He says something that triggers her and then she responds and it's like, you know, and she's 
a boss, you know, at work and where she, where she is. So she's kind of like, oh, well, you're not going to come at me like this. And he's like, well, you're not going to come at me like this. Uh, and, and you, you see that happen with her and Lewis and also what, uh, you know, Sean was talking about with Brayden, you know, I, I think that the other mm-hmm. thing that, um, which I love what you said, Sean, about, you know, how black people interact. The other thing is um, what I found is sometimes there's this um, comfort in tokenism that happens, right? So it's like, you're used to being the only one and some black people are uncomfortable when another person is in that <clears> space, <throat> another black person enters that space. So in the same way that Jax, you know, is kind of like, she makes a joke like, oh, you want me to be with the black client, ha ha ha, mm-hmm. whatever. Like she kind of knows, fine, I get it. That's why you want me there. And and Brayden's character is a little bit kind of like, oh, is she, oh, do they just see me as the black client? And that's why they brought her in. So they're both bringing their triggers of like, he's like, well, I'm more than just the black client. And she's like, I'm more than just the black lawyer, <laughs> you know? And so, and then so, and so without just realizing like, why do, why are we fighting? <laughs> why are we, why are we so uncomfortable with being uh, with our blackness that we either have to feel like we own it and are the only ones in charge of it. And, and to me, that is kind of in general, sometimes what happens right on, on TV shows and entertainment, there can only be one strong black woman on the show. There can only be, you know, one black man on the show. And with this show, I was like, everybody black. <laughs> so <laughs> it's like, there's gonna be so many black people that, you know what I mean? And then, then that you're not even gonna, you can't even say that it's the only one, you know, even in episode four, when, you know, we have a woman come in who's, you know, consulting as a jury consultant. I, I was very purposefully, I was like, I want her to be, like she, she's the, she could be on her own show, <laughs> you know, like she's a strong, you know, successful black woman who Jax isn't, there's no drama. She's not threatened by, you know, she brings mm-hmm. her in, they're having conversations. And even though it's a guest character, it, I, it was important to me to see those dynamics. Um, and so, you know, for me, as far as like, you know, the, the, the murder and the storyline, um, you know, in the case, yeah, that's what you're, you're following as the audience member, but really, I wanted to draw you into to these characters, all the characters, whether it's, um, you know, the black characters or just the people of, you know, Tim's character, Victor's character, um, that you really see like L.A. Like this is this is L.A. This is L.A. And these are real people that you're following. Um, Michael, you can finish answering your question since you got caught up. And Tim, I apologize if I, I accidentally cut you off. So you can also answer after Michael as well. Thank you. I apologize for that. Um, yeah, I, I just feel like the 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 marriage. Um, I, I've enjoyed. Ronald knows how I feel. Like the writing has been stellar from the jump, and I feel like um, the way that she wrote this marriage and the the put the the, the push and pull and the back and forth um, and how these two people who clearly love each other just can't quite connect. Um, you know, I, I thought that was just like, that to me was spot on. And it's one of the things that I can't wait to watch unfold as the series, um, you know, unravels, because I think it's just going to be, um, I don't know, for whatever reason, it, spe- it speaks to me. Um, and so, you know, it's, uh, that's what I'm looking forward to seeing the most. Yeah, I mean, in a way, for, I mean, all of us are... Uh, actors of color so we've all felt what it feels like to be the only one uh, to be token on a set and when when you're asked to be a part in a story and play a thing that seems to be a trope that that's often times uh, warning sign warning flags go up but when I saw this character uh, and I knew that Romola was behind it she was she was the one that was creating the story I was so willing to open up my trust take off any of the baggage, uh, take off, even just ignore the fact that I was Asian American and just look into the soul of what my, what I could bring to the, to the character and what the character needed to bring to Jax. And, you know, I think you'll, I think you guys know, like in one of the early episodes, you know, Ramla had me speaking my, my native tongue to, uh, to another actor. And, the fact that she let me speak my native tongue, not my, not a rehearsed Korean tongue that I, that I worked on hard with my wife, but the tongue that I spoke, the language that I spoke with my mom growing up as, you know, I only spoke Korean with 
one person for about 18 years of my life. And that was my mom until I met my wife who was like, oh, you're speaking completely wrong. But <laughs> the fact that I get to speak my tongue that I share with a majority of Korean Americans that grew up in, in America, uh, that was actually a very special gift to me to be able to, to show that on screen. Yeah. And I, and I will say, Tim, like, you know, even just creating the character of Daniel, um, you know, sometimes, you know, with casting people, you know, they'll be like, okay, oh, I like, oh, they're Asian American. Can they be, you know, Japanese? And I was like, no, Korean, like, like he has, the character has to be Korean because in LA there's a history of, with blacks and Koreans. And I want to be able to explore that. And I want to feel like this is a person who grew up in a certain section of Los Angeles. And I want that character to feel authentic. So it was important to me that Daniel was Korean and also, you know, but also like from Echo Park and like, you know, so like had that kind of quirky, you know, kind of sensibility too. So I was, you know, so happy that Tim uh, and, and could speak Korean because that was also an audition, like, mm -hmm. you know, speak Korean because I, I I wanted that to be an, an option, you know, to, for him to be able to do. So I was very happy that, that Tim came along, that he could do all those things and also be very funny. <laughs> very funny. Well, very funny. Thank you, Rambla. Like, uh, I, my natural inclination is to, to get, to, 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 to sort of hide, but I think the ones that have seen the show notice that my hair gets messier, my clothes get louder. Uh, you, you kept putting me front and center as a character. Mm -hmm. So there was no moment that I, that, did you let, and even with the lines that Daniel says, he's bold. He might say the wrong joke at the wrong mm -hmm. time, but he's bold. And so you allowed me to be bold. You allowed my character to always be front and center. Yeah. And, and, and I, well, I appreciate that, but I also for, honestly, like for, I always, you know, to me, like no character was small, right? Even, yeah. if, even if it was a guest character or, you know, just had a few lines, like I really did think about every person who was coming on screen and, and we were casting like what I was saying about whether it was complexion, you know, like what their complexion was or their hair. You know, we talked about like with, uh, you know, Jax's friends, like what their hairstyles were. Um, and, you know, I just wanted to make sure that we were seeing a diverse type of personalities of all people of color um, and really putting thought into it, even just making sure characters had last names. There are a lot of times where people of color are on shows and they just have first names. They don't even, they don't have the decency to give people last names. So um, all of those things was very thoughtful and was very important to me on the show. Angela? Yeah, um, I just, uh, you know, coming to this, this, this story, you know, you think you come here for this, this case and um, as a, person also as a an actor i have been falling more and more in love with how women support each other around this character um i think that jax is so intelligent and surrounds herself um around other intelligent women especially um and i you really sort of see that in this the script strong women strong women that continue to challenge jax um, and I think that 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 factor makes me so proud of this show to share it with the world because I feel like it's a celebration for women, especially black women, especially strong black women to be like, we can do this. We have always had to do this and we can do it this way. And strong women can gather together and we don't have to end up bloody and beat up and bruised by it, but we can learn to support each other. Um, so that has been, that has been such a uplifting and a prideful piece that I've taken from being a part of this. And I hope that other women and people get to see these Black women um, support each other because Jax is complicated, um, but she is brave enough to surround herself around other strong women. And I'm, 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 I'm really proud to be a part of that squad. Squad up! <laughs> <laughs> Oh, wait, you're on mute, Carolyn. Oh, sorry. I was saying, um, thank you so much for all of your thoughtful answers. Like, I really enjoy all the individual characters for how complex they are. And you're all doing an amazing job. <laughs> thank you, Carolyn. Thank you. Thank you.